Question. Isn't the law written on our hearts now? Why try to keep it externally? Answer. Having the law written on our heart is indeed a New Testament feature. Read Hebrews chapter 8 and chapter 10. But wasn't having the law on the heart already an Old Testament feature from the beginning? Let's keep reading to find out. Speaking of the Torah, Moses taught in Deuteronomy 30 verse 14, quote, The word is very near you. It is in your mouth and it is in your heart so that you can do it, end quote. The psalmist stated, quote, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee, end quote. That's Psalm 119, verse 11. Surely, Psalm 19, 7 through 13, as well as the entire chapter of Psalm 119, is speaking favorably of the Torah of Moshe, the law of God. Paul coined the phrases law of the spirit of life and law of sin in Romans. He also coined the phrase law of Christ in 1 Corinthians 9, 21, and again in Galatians 6, 2. In Yeshua, Paul calls the Torah holy, righteous, good, and spiritual. That's Romans 7, 12, and 14. And Paul considered himself to be in agreement with and a servant of the law of God with his mind. That's Romans 7, 22, and 25. Moreover, Paul also speaks of love being the fulfillment of the law in Romans 13, 10, and James, or rather we should call him Jacob, speaks of the perfect law of liberty in Jacob 1.25 of his letter to the believers. With these data in mind, where then should the law of Moses fit within the New Testament theology for believers for the believer in Messiah? Firstly, we must affirm that according to the Bible, only the circumcised heart can have the law of God written upon it. Also, recall that when the New Testament was being written, the only righteous law given of God that Israel knew of was the law of Moses. The very same law that Yeshua stated in Matthew 5 would not pass away down or even down to the smallest jot or tittle until all is fulfilled. And if you recall, we studied that in answer 3 above. Therefore, the New Testament writers could not have been speaking of anything other than the law of God that would be written in our hearts as believers. The proof that the law written on our hearts is the very law of Moses is made evident when we go back and continue to read about this quote-unquote internal heart law from the pages of the Old Testament itself. So, let's pull some quotes right out of the Tanakh and let's talk about this law that's written on the heart. Deuteronomy 6.6, 6, quote, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart, end quote. Deuteronomy 10.16, quote, Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stick, stiff-necked, end quote. Deuteronomy 30, verse 6, quote, And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart, and the heart of thy seed, to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live, end quote. Psalm 40, verse 8, quote, I delight to do your will, O my God, your law is within my heart, end quote. Jeremiah 31, 33, quote, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people, end quote. Ezekiel 11, 19 through 20. And I will give them one heart and a new spirit I will put within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes and keep my rules and obey them. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God, end quote. And lastly, Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27, quote, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them." End quote. It is clear from these Old Testament verses that the law of the heart is the law of God, the law of Moshe. 
It's also clear that the Spirit of God, the Ruach HaKodesh, writes this law on the heart of those who genuinely know and love God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, a love only possible when one surrenders to the Messiah Yeshua. With this in mind, we can now appreciate Paul's statement in Romans 8, which was hinted at in my answer to question 4 above, but is presented in its entirety here. And I already read this in the um, liturgy, but I'll just skim through it again real quick. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. That's Romans 8, 1 through 8, as rendered from the ESV. In conclusion to this part of my question, we see then that the Torah is the universal document for both peoples and it outlines God's plan for all mankind, both Jews and Gentiles. God's eternal promises are intended for all those with circumcised hearts, and only the Spirit of God can write the Word of God on the heart of an individual. Thus, the Torah is not just for Jews only. A person does not need to take on legally recognized Jewish status in order to be grafted into the people group of Israel. This will become a central theme of Paul's letters, and it will particularly be helpful for us as we study the historical, social, and religious context of the book of Galatians. Thank you.